In this chapter, we are going to discuss the duality of a Hilbert space. Uh, I will do this in dimension one, but this can be extended to higher dimensions with not a lot of problems. Now, I will consider I an open interval of R. It can be AB, it can be minus infinity B, it can be A uh, plus infinity, or it could be R uh, entirely. Now, what I would like to remind you is what we did last semester in the Convergence, Integration, and Probability class. Uh, we had a theorem that stated that if I take an L2 space endowed with uh, the inner product of that L2 space, which, as you know, is the integral of the product of the two functions, then that is a Hilbert space on the field R. And this is a very general uh, statement of the theorem where we have a, a space E, we have a sigma algebra curly E, and we have a merger mu. But of course, uh, this can be just, uh, uh, you know, considered in simply e equals R. Uh, the sigma algebra can just be uh, the, the Borel sigma algebra, and the measure can be the bon, the, the, the big measure. That is, uh, you know, I mean, a very, very standard things to do. Now, what the reason why I am uh, saying this, uh, this um, I'm, I'm reminding you of this theorem, is because we also have something very useful in this, uh, in this class, which is the Ries representation theorem. Now, that theorem states that if I have a Hilbert space, H, uh, and if I have a linear and continuous function that goes from H to R, in other words, if I have an element in the topological dual H prime, then there exists a unique X U uh, in H such that U of X can always be represented as an inner product of x with that x u. So any linear continuous function from h to r, in other words, any element in the dual space can be represented as the scalar product with someone. That is the Ries representation theorem. And of course, when we do this, then we can just say, okay, let's consider h as L2. As we know, L2 is a Hilbert space, that's what we just said. Therefore, what we're saying is that for all linear continuous functions going from L2 to R, in other words, from all elements in the dual space to L2, then that, that, that function can be expressed, can be represented as the inner product of X with a given XU that will represent that uh, linear continuous function, that element of the dual space. Now, of course, uh, when, you, when you do this, then think about it as a function in L2. So what I'm saying is that for all u in L2 prime in the topological dual space to L2, then what we're saying is that there exists a unique gu, which is a function in L2, such that for all function f in L2, u of f will be f in our product with G U. Now what we will do is we will identify that dual space with L2. So L2 prime will be identified with L2. And again, if you have problems understanding this identification, please go back to the class of last semester, CIP. Actually, I'm putting a link here to, to, this, to this very chapter when we're doing this. Um, well, it's in French, but you can use subtitles. Uh, so uh, what, what we can really do here is identify L2 prime and L2. Now, what happens if I have a subspace of L2. So it's not any subspace. It's going to be a Banach subspace, which is going to be a linear space. Uh, and, but, but it's, let's say that V is included in L2 with these properties on V. So it has to be a Banach space and it has to be a linear space. What happens? So what happens is that now, if you look at uh, V, which is smaller than L2, think about the functions going from that space, that smaller space, to R. Now, to be linear and continuous, it is less demanding because you have to be it's less demanding because you have to be linear and continuous 
on less functions. So you will have more linear and continuous functions going from V to R than you had going from L2 to R, which means that the space of linear continuous functions going from V to R will be bigger than the set of linear continuous functions going from L2 to R. In other words, if V is included in L2, then the dual space to L2 will be included in V prime. Now, since we have identified L2 and L2 prime, here is what we have. What we have is that V is included in L2, which is included in V prime. L2 will be called the pivot space.